Do you work with low duty cycle signals? Then boxcar averaging is the ideal technique to increase your signal to noise ratio and measurement speed. Hi, I'm Heidi, and in this video, you will learn how to set up a boxcar measurement using the UHF boxcar averager and the Lab1 user interface. A boxcar averager should capture the signal during a well-defined temporal window and reject the noise in between. It is therefore crucial to adjust the detection window to the signal for a successful measurement. If you want to learn more about the theory behind boxcar averaging, please have a look at our white paper, Principles of Boxcar Averaging, and the related video. Today, we will focus on how to set up a measurement step by step. For this, we have created a pulsed test signal using the AWG option of the instrument and connected it to the signal input of the instrument. Now let's have a look at the graphical user interface. The boxcar tool consists of a big plot area and a set of control tabs. To get started, we have to provide the repetition rate of the signal. Here, the repetition rate is a TTL signal connected to one of the trigger input channels. By activating XREF, the frequency of the external signal is mapped to one of the internal oscillators. The plot area provides a graphical display of one period of the signal. We now choose the channel where the signal is connected and the oscillator corresponding to the repetition rate. Now we start the measurement and see a typical scenario where the signal is so small that it is completely buried in noise. The so-called periodic waveform analyzer provides a solution to overcome this problem by averaging the signal over many periods to increase the signal-to-noise ratio. You can select the number of samples to average over in this field. Note that this will not affect the boxcar averaging result, but only the visualization of the signal in the plot area. The x-axis can be changed from phase to time, frequency FFT, or harmonics. If you want to zoom into a particular feature, you can do this using the mouse wheel and then copying the range to adjust the measurement. Now let's go back to the full period and switch to the boxcar tab. With the graphical display of the signal, it is now straightforward to set up the boxcar detection window during which the signal will be integrated. We can do this using the two cursors and then copying the range, or by entering the numeric values directly. Now we can activate the measurement and directly see the integrated value. In a real experiment, the signal often contains a reference pulse or a DC offset. For this case, a second window can be defined as a baseline using the cursors. When activating it, the integrated signal from the baseline window will be subtracted from the integrated signal in the gate window. Finally, you can choose the number of periods over which the signal will be averaged to find the best compromise between signal-to-noise ratio and measurement speed. The bandwidth of the measurement can be seen in this field, while the signal-to-noise ratio can be analyzed by plotting the results over a period of time using the plotter tool. If we now change the number of averaging periods down to measuring a single pulse or averaging over many periods, we can immediately see the effect. Math tools like a histogram can be used to directly calculate the signal-to-noise ratio. I hope this video gave you a good overview of the UHF boxcar averager and how to set up an experiment step by step. For more information, please check out our white paper, Principles of Boxcar Averaging and get in touch to discuss your application. Thanks for watching.